ladies welcome 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 back to my channel welcome to another video so today we want to talk about pregnancy complications pregnancy is such a beautiful thing it is such oh my god it is such a sweet sweet experience from the moment you hear a baby's heartbeat to uh you know just watching your body change experiencing all those changes in your body uh growing a bump feeling baby movement in your tummy it is such a beautiful experience however pregnancy can come with some complications and these complications can involve the health of the mother or her baby or both of them and in some cases some women who were healthy before getting pregnant can end up having to manage their health for the rest of their lives because pregnancy can drastically affect the health of a woman to the point that even after having a baby she would keep you know she will keep having to deal with some health issues so like i said pregnancy is a sweet and beautiful and long experience and it can come with some complications so today we want to talk about some very common of pregnancy complications that any woman any woman of any age or race can experience during her pregnancy this video is not meant to scare you i know that some of you watching me right now are currently pregnant or you are trying to conceive and after hearing everything we'll be talking about today you might start having some anxiety and that is not what i am here to do this video is not meant to scare you or put any kind of anxiety on you i think as a pregnant woman it is very important it is a wise thing for you to do to gather all the information available out there related to pregnancy pregnancy postpartum you know becoming a mom having a newborn it is a wise thing for you to do to get all these informations both the good and the bad if you are only envisaging a, a positive uh, pregnancy and delivery which is good which is very very healthy for you uh that is not enough you need to be aware of the good the rough you know the not so good so that you are physically and mentally prepared for anything because pregnancy sometimes it can just it can just go a way that you did not plan so today we are going to be talking about some very common pregnancy complications whether you experience them or not whether you know you look forward to them or not just know about them so, so i have a list of 10 pregnancy complications that we're going to be discussing we may not be able to cover all of them today but we can start from somewhere and end somewhere maybe there'll be a part two of this video so number one on my list is hyperemesis gravidarum hyperemesis gravidarum Number two is high blood pressure, also known as hypertension. Another one is gestational diabetes, infection, preeclampsia, preterm labor, ectopic pregnancy, congenital disorders, placenta previa, anemia, bleeding, and I would also like to add depression. Depression. This can happen both uh, during the pregnancy and after a pregnancy. So this is probably about 11 topics that we're going to cover. So let us start with the first one, hyperemesis gravidarum. So morning sickness is something that's very common in a pregnancy. About 80% of women experience morning sickness during, during their pregnancy, especially in their first trimester. But hyperemesis gravidarum is not something very common. Only about 3% of pregnant women will experience this in their pregnancy. And some women have described hyperemesis gravidarum as you know just morning sickness but from my experience and from researchers and experts out there it is not morning sickness it is an extreme and severe case of morning sickness because with morning sickness uh by the end of your first trimester it will start to you know it will start to ease off and disappear by the time you get to your second trimester morning sickness has almost completely disappeared but with hyperemesis gravidarum the symptoms will persist the symptoms will linger it will continue sometimes to the end of a pregnancy in my first pregnancy i continued to vomit to feel a lot of the symptoms till the day i had my baby the morning i had my baby so hyperemesis gravidarum is severe the symptoms will continue to linger for a very long time and in some cases some women will have to be admitted in the hospital they will have to get you know iv fluid because they are, they are just not able to eat to keep anything down whatever you eat will come out you will continue to vomit and throw up and you may find yourself in the hospital for treatment now let us talk about the symptoms so a woman experiencing hyperemesis gravidarum will experience severe nausea severe nausea another one is vomiting more than three times in a day not three times in a day more than three times per day and that is something that i definitely experienced 
another one is losing more than five uh, five percent of your pregnancy weight so in your first trimester you are not supposed to be losing a lot of weight okay you can just maintain your your pre-pregnancy weight but if you are losing a lot of weight in your first trimester due to the fact that you can't keep anything down you are constantly vomiting then it could mean that you have hg another one is dehydration dehydration it is difficult to keep any fluid any water in your body so you are constantly dehydrated another one is feeling dizzy and lightheaded feeling dizzy and lightheaded pain less normal pain less normal as a pregnant woman you're supposed to be going to the bathroom to pee multiple times because of you know everything going on in there but if you are not able to pee you are dehydrated and you're not going to the bathroom to pee because there's no fluid in your body it could mean that you have hg another one is extreme tiredness extreme tiredness you are, you are finding it difficult to even turn roll over on the bed to get up to move to do anything then you may be experiencing hg and the last on my list is fainting fainting if you are feeling lightheaded there's a high chance that you could pass out you know at some point so these are some common symptoms of hyperemesis gravidarum i did experience a lot of this i even fainted at some point during my pregnancy but that's a story for another day so if you're experiencing any of these symptoms then it could be that you have hyperemesis gravidarum now before i continue again i'm going to say this this video is not meant for you to self-diagnose yourself i am just sharing information it is up to you to take this information and ask an actual licensed professional you can't use this video to diagnose yourself i, I wouldn't like that for you okay there are also some less common symptoms of hyperemesis gravidarum and those are low blood pressure another one is rapid heart rate your heart rate is beating very fast faster than normal another one is confusion confusion if you just feel like disoriented like you don't know where you are you don't know what is going on that could be another sign or another one and the last on my list is jaundice jaundice which is a sign of a uh, liver damage so these are some symptoms of hyperemesis gravidarum if you are experiencing at least four or five of these symptoms then that is serious that is something you want to take seriously you want to you know call your hospital and let your doctor be aware so what is the cause for hyperemesis gravidarum what causes this condition in pregnant women now from my research experts are still trying to find answers they are still trying to find the root cause of this condition in pregnant women but so far what we have is that it is believed to be associated with your hormones your pregnancy hormones so during pregnancy some hormones in your body will rise up very high hormones like your hcg and estrogen and according to experts a rise in estrogen can lead to you feeling nauseous and vomiting so this could be the best this is the best explanation that we have so far you know as a cause for hyperemesis gravidarum who is at risk how do you know if you're at risk for this condition if you have experienced hyperemesis gravidarum in a previous pregnancy then you are you are most likely to experience it again in a future pregnancy if you are pregnant with multiples or twins this is a very common one a lot of women who are who are pregnant with twins or triplets will easily experience hyperemesis gravidarum another one is if you are pregnant for the first time which was my experience with my first pregnancy i experienced something very severe with nausea and vomiting another one is family history if your mom or your grandma or any 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 woman in your family ever experienced uh hg then you your chances of you experiencing it is high and the last on my list is a condition called uh gestational trophoblastic disease if you have a condition called gestational trophoblastic disease then you are at risk of experiencing it by the way this uh this is a condition that this is a condition that makes abnormal cell to grow in your uterus so if you have a condition like this then you are at risk of experiencing hyperemesis gravidarum so what are the treatments what can you do if you are currently experiencing this right now or at least to avoid it completely you can uh you can get a wristband there's a special type of wristband called um pressure point wristband pressure point wristband so because i suffered so much in my first pregnancy of uh, from this condition by my second pregnancy we already knew what to do so we got that wristband immediately so once i found that i was pregnant i started wearing that wristband it is called the pressure point wristband or acupressure bands 
I put the picture here you can get it from Amazon and it's not just for pregnant women if you have motion disease motion sickness maybe flying in the plane makes you nauseous or traveling by boat on water makes you nauseous you can also put on this wristband it will help to manage the urge to to vomit okay so that is the first one you can do get a pressure point wristband another one is eating or chewing ginger ginger roots you can you can chew on ginger root that was that's something i did throughout my other pregnancies because i didn't want to deal with nausea and vomiting so ginger can help to uh, reduce the urge of vomiting you can also drink ginger tea so in my first pregnancy the only thing that i think somebody recommended it for us was for me to take ginger tea that was the only thing I could eat. I didn't like it. I didn't enjoy it. But once I take ginger tea, it would reduce the urge of, of, of throwing up. Another one is to eat bland food. This is from my experience. You want to eat bland food like crackers, you know, not anything sweet or spicy. So crackers, you can eat toast. Instead of eating an actual bread, you can toast the bread so that it becomes dried. You can eat uh, rice without stew just rice okay whether it's white rice or brown rice just make sure there is no spicy stew on it it can be maybe vegetable but nothing spicy you can also eat uh potatoes just potatoes by itself i mean this is what this was what i was eating because you want to nourish your body your body needs food your baby needs food you need to eat something but if you are dealing with hyperemesis gravidarum you definitely want to avoid uh, spicy foods, peppery foods, or uh, you know, greasy foods. Yes, because this can upset your tummy and trigger trigger you to start throwing up again. So bland food and dried food can help. Ginger, ginger tea, ginger root can also help, and you can also get that wristband. And there are also anti anti nausea medications that your doctor can prescribe. I didn't take any medications. I had to suffer it in my first pregnancy. So if you like medications, you can talk to your doctor about it and get some. Another common pregnancy complication is high blood pressure. High blood pressure, also known as hypertension. So this happens when, when the vessels that carries blood from your heart to the other parts of your body, your other organs becomes narrowed. This vest, blood vessels becomes narrowed and that can put pressure in your arteries. So when this happens to a pregnant woman, it can make it hard for blood to reach the placenta. The placenta which is what provides nutrients and oxygen for her developing baby and if the and if the baby is not getting enough nutrients enough oxygen then that can cause the baby to have slow growth slow growth and that can also put the mother uh, at risk of preterm labor premature labor so you know hypertension during pregnancy is something that can definitely affect a mother and her baby so what are some symptoms of hypertension during pregnancy the first one is severe headaches severe headaches Another one is blood vision. If you notice that your vision has become blood, you're not able to see things clearly anymore, it could be a sign that you are experiencing hypertension. Another one is stomach pain. It's troubled breathing. If you're having a hard time breathing normally and regularly, that could be another one. And the last on my list is swollen face and swollen hands. Swollen face and swollen hands. Now, let me quickly say this. Some of the symptoms I just mentioned are also normal symptoms that any pregnant woman can experience. So if you're experiencing any of these, don't start diagnosing yourself already. You always want to talk to your doctor, let him know how you are feeling and the severity of, of your symptoms. And then your doctor can diagnose you for anything. So don't just hear, I have a headache or I have pain here, I have blood vision and then diagnose yourself. No, you can't do that. All right, let us move on to talk about prevention. What can you do to avoid hypertension? Uh, if you already have it, how can you manage it? Uh, the first one on my list is that, first of all, if you, if you have already had a high blood pressure before getting pregnant, then there's a chance that you experience it during your pregnancy. It, and it might even become more severe during the pregnancy. Uh, so what my advice to you, to every one of you watching me right now, whether you've had it before or you're just experiencing it for the first time, you want your, your blood pressure to be monitored closely. Your pregnancy should be monitored closely by your doctor. So you want to go for regular prenatal checkups. Don't skip any appointments. Go for every single appointment and make sure your blood pressure is checked. You can also get yourself a blood pressure monitor, a blood pressure machine, and check your blood pressure by yourself at home. 
yes i'm gonna put the numbers on the screen so that you know the numbers to look to look for as a pregnant woman so you can get yourself a blood pressure machine check yourself at home or visit your doctor regularly another thing you can do is to try to manage your weight your weight gain during pregnancy or avoid excessive weight gain I know that being pregnant can leave you with a huge appetite and huge cravings but you don't always have to satisfy your cravings you don't always have to it is okay to eat a cookie you know every once in a while eat some slice of cake once in a while but it shouldn't those foods can bring a lot of weight on your body and you know that that can put you at risk of hypertension you want to manage your weight and try your best to not gain some excessive weight during the pregnancy another one is to minimize stress stress is never a good thing to have when you're trying to conceive or when you are pregnant so do everything to minimize stress cut away from stressful situations and enjoy a peaceful a peaceful pregnancy another one is to eat healthy eat healthy like i said it is very easy to crave a lot of unhealthy foods when you are pregnant yes once in a while you can eat some french fries you can eat some cookies but it shouldn't be your main food so i already have a video on you know healthy foods to eat during pregnancy you want to watch that video to see what you should be eating so these are some things that you can do to manage the condition or completely avoid it if you haven't gotten it already so yeah that is another one that is another pregnancy complication hypertension high blood pressure can put you or your baby's life at risk and you don't want to experience it at all so we're going to stop here for today we still have a whole lot more to cover i'm going to make a part two and we'll get to cover all of that but for now, if you have any questions related to pregnancy, pregnancy issues, pregnancy complications, then leave them down in the comment section. I would, you know, look into them and see what I can, see what I can find and we'll talk about it in my next video. Um, yeah, like I mentioned before, this video is not meant to scare you. You may be experiencing some of these symptoms and not have any of these uh, health issues. So please don't be scared. If you have any concerns, the person to see is your doctor. It's not me. I don't know what you would take. I don't know what to, what you would what medication you would take to help with preeclampsia or high blood pressure. I don't know. I am not qualified to to recommend anything. But there are people whose job it is. See those people and get our recommendations and prescriptions and enjoy a healthy pregnancy. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you learned anything, if you found it helpful, and please share this video with a pregnant woman every pregnant woman needs this information at their fingertips you need to know these things it is okay to be positive but you also want to just know these things so that when you see the signs you attack it immediately so please help me share this video subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and uh, yeah i will see all of you guys in my next one